Hello. <laughs> Hello, everybody. How are you today? If you're out there, let me know. I'm just waiting, having some trouble with video on my end. Can you see me? Hey, Wendy, how's it going? Can you see me? Can you hear me? It's all well. It's good to be here making art with you folks. And how are you doing, Wendy? Let's see. Let's see who else is going to join us today. All good, that's good to hear. Okay. So I might be working a little bit blind today, but as long as you guys, you folks can keep me updated about what you're seeing and what you're hearing. Oh, that's good. Thank you, Anthony Granny. <laughs> so, well, wow, what an interesting day. <laughs> folks, uh, thanks so much for joining us today for our pop-up live stream art studio at the living room. I'm super happy to be here and I'm so glad that you're able to join me. For folks who are able to stay the whole time and make art with us, that's fantastic. But as always, if you can only dip in for a few minutes here and there, or spend a little bit of time with us, or tune in later, even after it's been archived and it's no longer live, you are all welcome to this beautiful creative space that we have with the community. It's a beautiful, blustery kind of day here in Oshawa right now, as I look out my window. A lot of beautiful autumn leaves blowing around. I think we even had a surprise shower this morning with some thunder. It's been a stormy day. And of course, today is also the day where we shared some news about the Living Room Community Art Studio. Uh, a, a change in what we're doing, difficult decisions that were made about closing the studio space, letting that go. Uh, of course, we're still here and we are still making art with you. The living room is still here. It has not ended. We are alive and kicking. We just need to make some choices so that we can continue to be here with everyone and create and engage with folks in the most meaningful of ways. So I will be having some opportunities uh, in the next coming of weeks, in the next weeks, for folks to ask questions about that. I think we'll do another a kind of town hall live stream uh, one day next week. There will be opportunities for people to pick up their artwork from the studio if they haven't already had a chance to do so. And we'll be sharing some art materials with folks, some art kits of materials that we don't necessarily need to take into storage or some materials that can't be taken into storage, like markers or paint, that kind of stuff. We want it to be used. We want it to be used up and used as soon as possible. So keep an eye out for that. But for the meantime, why don't we make some art together? <laughs> I've been thinking a lot uh, just about, again, last week, picking up off of last week about texture and just that uh, kind of tactile quality to art making, um, piecing things together, collage, fiber arts, all those things have been in my mind recently. And I think today I'm going to explore with some paper craft, some paper weaving, perhaps. So. We'll see where that goes. To start maybe though, let's see what have I got here. I might just start with another spiral. You know how I love the spiral. Hey, Laura. Oh, wow, that would be great to see you. I know we have, I think it's, um. do we have the workshop kit day or the free art kit day scheduled for the, I think it's a Saturday, is it the 17th? I can't remember now. And then on the live stream, we'll have that on the evening before so folks can have, ask questions. I should know this stuff. I just send out the newsletter. Why don't I know this stuff? <laughs> I guess I've got some other stuff on my brain. How are you doing, Laura? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Now, if folks do have questions as you're watching, please feel free to ask. I'll do my best to keep up with you. Um, there's still a lot of stuff to be done at the studio, obviously, so we're just in the middle of everything. So I think I'm gonna use some of this time just to relax and create along with you. Now, for folks who might be new to the live stream or haven't been here in a while, of course, you are welcome to make art with us. You don't have to make the same things that I'm making, but 
uh, you're also equally welcome to just do whatever you need to do to take care of yourself today and stay in that creative headspace. It's not always about making art. Sometimes we need to refuel, we need to gather inspiration, we need to reflect on things that we've already created. Sometimes you just gotta wash the dishes or fold the laundry or you know, tidy something to make space in your life for something new, make space in your space for something new. Um, all of that is welcome. You can just listen to us if you like. And then if you want to engage in the chat and type in comments or questions, please feel free. I always love knowing how folks are doing and seeing what people are working on or learning about what their creative practice has been like lately. It is a busy time of year for a lot of folks and there's been a lot of big changes for all of us with the pandemic that's taking place. So I can imagine, well, if I'm feeling a lot of interesting and difficult things. I imagine a lot of folks out there are also feeling those things. So if you'd like to share, if you'd like to reach out, please feel free. And don't be afraid to ask for supports if you need it. We've got a lot of amazing people in our community and a lot of them are on this chat right now and they're there for you. And I'm here for you as much as, as much of any of us can be during times where we can't necessarily be with one another in person, reach out ask. You never know. Okay. And Laura's saying, ah, yes, the Saturday. So yes, not sure what I have there. Oh, I'm glad to hear you're okay. And I'm so glad you remember to be here today as well. Laura was one of the very first people to join our little art hive before we even had a space. Oh, fantastic. Laura's saying, have Laura has a turntable in the basement now, laundry folding and music yesterday. That's amazing. That's sometimes all you need is a little bit of music, right? It makes everything better. If I'm feeling really grumpy and I'm doing something and it's in the quiet, I sometimes think, why don't I have the radio on? Why am I not listening to a record or something like that? Music makes everything better. Um, but yeah, Laura was one of the first people to come out and join us before we even had a space. We used to do pop-up events in the community. So Carol, uh, Carol Vanderson, and who used to own this beautiful restaurant called The Table, who runs a lovely, fantastic community garden charity called We Grow Food uh, here in Durham region. Uh, that was her restaurant. And on Sundays at 3 p.m. when they closed up, essentially Carol just said, yeah, why not? Come on into the space, lock up when you're done, and you can make art here. So we used to hold these weekly pop-up art studios where we hauled bins and bins and bins of supplies out. And we just kind of put out an art buffet along the floor, along the wall of the restaurant. And people could choose what materials they wanted to work on. And we would just make art and hang out together. Some fantastic creations emerged from those days. It's amazing what you can do. You don't need a whole lot to do fantastic things. And as I've said many times before, that, that event, that weekly pop-up we used to have at the restaurant was where we met some of our very first uh, most amazing volunteers. And Laura is one of those. Hello, Nicole. Yay, Nicole, welcome. So nice to see you joining us today. Oh, Nicole, and Nicole's been listening to audiobooks lately. I love a good audiobook. I love a good audiobook and a good podcast. Something about just being able to free yourself to just absorb things at your own pace. I always, I love reading too. You know I do, folks. But every once in a while, an audiobook, just hearing someone's voice, having someone read to you, it's such a beautiful thing. It's a lovely, kind of intimate thing, but it's just really nice to have someone read to you. <laughs> and what are you working on today, Nicole? I know you have been, is it crocheting or is it knitting? Nicole's been creating these fantastical miniature creatures. I think the last one I saw was a dragon that you did. So beautiful, exceptional, exquisite detail in such a fine, small scale. And if you're working on stuff and you'd like to post pictures of them here, please do. You know you're always welcome to do that. And after the event, we'll post another opportunity, like a show and tell kind of piece. So if you don't know how or you don't feel comfortable sharing your work here, you can always join in and post things there. 
and share your work and we'll celebrate together. I'm just doing my spiral here, my inspired by Linda Berry. I love just letting it do what it wants to do. I think Linda had it, uh, the exercise Linda Berry uses is that you don't raise your pen once it started. Just kind of trust the process and let it ground you as you go. Mine are never very round. Mine always remind me of a tree trunk, a cross section of a tree trunk. I kind of like that. I love seeing how they end up. It's also a great way to, way to train myself, just sort of shake up that inner critic. To cut myself some slack. Remind myself that perfection ain't what it's cut up to be. And let's see, oh my gosh. So let's see Nicole here. Oh, Momo, welcome, welcome, Momo. So nice to see you. Oh goodness, am I still alive here? Or did I get bumped out? Am I still streaming? Can you guys still see me? Where am I? Uh-oh. Am I live? <laughs> this is one of those moments where I can't see me. Can you see me? Someone send me a text if you have if you're out there and you have my number. Send me a text and let me know if I'm still streaming for you. Am I still here? Oh my goodness. <laughs> so this is one of those moments. All right. Let's send a little tech, text to mind. Okay. If I am not streaming, let's see what's happening here. I think I got bounced out. Isn't it fabulous? Technology, what we can do. Now, if I have been bounced out, or if you can still see me, if you can still see me and hear me, this is what I'm going to do because I can't see you. So I'm going to end this stream and then I'll start another one quickly so that we can get back into the groove together, okay? All right, thank you. Oh wait, you're still there? Okay, so I'm gonna stop. Yeah, I'm gonna stop and then I'll make another stream. How exciting, folks. How weird and exciting. Although, if you guys can see me, but I can't see your chat and I really wanna see your chat. Oh, I need to, I need to stay in contact with the people. <laughs> okay, I'm going to start a new stream. That's what I'm going to do. So when I disappear here for a moment, don't worry, I'm coming back. Just hop on over to the next stream that'll post at the top of the living room and everything will be good. Okay? All right. Oh, wait. Wait. Oh, the excitement. In the meantime, I'm going to take this. I think I'm off my... We're going to see, I think Anthony Granny is joining us. Quickly, quickly. Meeting starting in two minutes. Oh my goodness. Well, hi. Hi, Welcome. everybody. This is Anthony Granny happening here. All right, here we go. So why can't we see it? I don't know. You're working with us, folks. You're in the flow. You're hanging in there. So I clicked on... What did I do here? So yeah, no, is, you're definitely I just got alive. bounced out. Um, I can't see any of here. the chat. We'll do this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to calm. I'm going to self-soothe as you're doing this <laughs> and continue my spiral. This is Anthony Granny, everybody. Hi. Now, every time folks ask about this amazing setup we have going on here, it's him. He's been the person behind this helping us create the templates we have here, the design. Over the years, I've learned a lot about live streaming and various technical things <laughs> from him. And hopefully one day, I think we're going to have a Skillshare with Anthony Granny. Mm, where are we? I know. It's interesting, huh? See, I can see, oh, look there, I can see, this is fascinating. 
This is what it looks like to be on the other side? <laughs> I'm just going to continue with my spiral here. These are the moments that make virtual art hives interesting. <laughs> okay, there. <gasps> Okay, so this so is fascinating. We're going to keep that muted. I'm going to keep. So I'm going to be watching the same live. thing that you're watching, folks. So I'm going to try and keep up with the comments, but because I'm reading on the Facebook page. Is that good? Well, we'll give it a try. Awesome. Okay. Or you can restart it. Mm, well, we're here. We'll see what happens today. We'll see what happens with this. We'll see how it goes. All right, folks. So I'm going to keep refreshing and looking at these comments. Oh. Let's see. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Lots of hellos coming in. <laughs> Lots of hellos coming in for Anthony Granny. Oh, that's nice. Oh, so good. I'm so glad. Okay, so people can see me. They can hear me. That's fantastic. Momo, thank you for sending me a message on the Facebook so I know. How... This is wild. This is, has not happened before. This is so exciting. I'm seeing it like... Everyone else is seeing it. So, <laughs> so please, yes, join, join the chat. We'll see how it goes. And I'm just going to continue working and trusting that we're all hanging in there together. What happens if I do this? Oh, what happens if I do that? Okay. Fascinating, fascinating. Okay, yep, just gonna... Oh no, I'm not... Oh, weird, weird, weird. I gotta mute myself. That's weird to hear my voice in too many... Okay, there. Whew. Folks, that's a little bit of excitement for this afternoon. Ah. <laughs> Did not expect that to happen. Well, with these days, what can you do? What can you expect? Just gotta keep on going with that flow. Thank you, Laura. Thank you, Momo. Thank you to everyone who sent me a message and a text to let me know that things are working out okay. <sighs> now, back to my spiral. So, yes, interesting times. Interesting times indeed for everyone. And for those folks who are watching from Montreal, I know that things have been a little intense for you folks there too. How are you hanging in? How are you holding up? I think it's good to be, uh, I don't know, every once in a while to be reminded about this, you know, what's happening to everyone right now. It's serious stuff. It's easy to forget sometimes what's going on out there, especially if we're lucky enough to have our own spaces, our own places where we can feel comfortable and be close to the ones we love. I do love a good spiral, folks. I think I love this exercise so much because you can do it with whatever you have and wherever you are. All you need is a piece, like a, a piece of paper, a piece of scrap paper, a newspaper, some recycling. And I just, well, I can only speak for myself here. But it helps me relax. It helps me feel grounded. Hope everyone else out there is feeling grounded and relaxed as much as you can be during these times. And especially after our adventure with the technology. <laughs> I've been really inspired lately by what the other art hives, the other virtual hives are doing. And Momo, who's watching and hanging out with us today, is one of the virtual hive operators out there for Spanish-speaking communities. And what was it, yesterday? Was it only yesterday? We spoke with Asa from the Japanese Creative Hive. It's, it's such an interesting thing to be able to connect with those people that keep you creative, who also have different perspectives on what's happening in the world. 
I think sometimes with our own communities, it's easy to get, well, stuck isn't the right word, but when you're only seeing one thing, it's hard to make space for new things. It's hard to envision new things. So when I'm interviewing these facilitators from these virtual hives, it's almost like I'm traveling. I'm being put into another world. I'm placing myself in another environment and learning about, learning about what it's like to be them and getting to see a bit of the world. And I think I needed that. I really think I needed that. Hi, Teresa. Nice to see you today. <laughs> Thanks so much. It does look, does it look like a rose? Yes, Nicole's saying that. And it looks like a little bit like a rose. I see like a cross section of a tree trunk, but it can also be a rose. And when I, sometimes I'll paint them once I'm complete and add some color. And depending on what colors I use, it does feel somewhat floral. It's, I, yeah, I love it. And interesting, so Laura crochets in the round and that's called, okay, I'm not gonna pronounce this correctly. I'm gonna try though. Uh, Agumurgi? Agumur okay, Nicole, I think you know how to do this cro type of crochet as well. If, let me know, if you wanna spell it out for me so I can say it properly, please do. But crocheting in the round, it is something, there's something so comforting about doing anything in the round. Now the screen is definitely having issues with this. It's going in and out of focus from what I can see. Ah, I knew it. Yes, see, I knew Nicole and Laura, you have that in common. The lens today does not like my tree trunk, so I'm going to put this aside and I'm going to begin on my next piece. I'm gonna try something new. Well, something I haven't done in a very long time. I think since kindergarten or grade one, maybe? That sense of when you were still creating just because you could and you didn't think about what it was supposed to look like so much and you didn't, everything was just an experiment, a delicious discovery. Oh. oh, lovely. And Momo's introducing us to some new guests. Thank you so much. Welcome to the Living Room Community Art Studio, folks. Um, you can, yes, like, so for folks who might be joining us for the first time, um, thank you for hanging in there through my, my tech anxieties. It's always fun to see what happens on the other side. It happens to all of us, um, but also welcome. So the living room space here is a virtual hive. We do every Wednesday from 2 p.m. till 3.30 p.m. Hopefully in the future, we're going to be doing lots more of virtual work, but for now, this is what we have. And it's just a space to hang out and create, to relax. Uh, if folks want to join the chat and ask questions or talk to one another, you are more than welcome. And for living room people out there, volunteers that are a part of our community, please feel free to welcome newcomers. I can only see people when they've joined the chat, when they make a comment, but otherwise I can't see who might be just watching and listening to us or making art along with us. Um, please, you know, it's, just imagine that I always say like it's, I'm at the back of the studio washing coffee mugs or something. And if you're sitting at one of the front tables and someone new comes in, please feel free to welcome them and uh, help them feel comfortable in the virtual hive. Mm. And I always like letting folks know too, even though whatever I'm making here, you don't have to make the same thing. You can make whatever you want or need to make with the materials that you have on hand. I know each one of us is in a different place with what we might have these days. And this is just an opportunity to play, to discover, to learn a little bit about where you're at. And if you had to, or if we wanted to express yourself in some way, don't put any pressure on yourself to create something fantastic. Think about it like, yeah, like play, like we're all just connecting and playing together. I started the day with a spiral. And I think I'm going to do, oh, this is going to be interesting. This is going to be, I'm gonna mix it up with some scissors as well. From spirals, I'm going to go to weaving. And just play with paper. Oh, you're being tricky. I might not be able to tear you. I might have to cut you. In my mind, I have this idea of creating some 
fairly straight pieces, but I love a good torn edge. I'm just going to create some strips here, so bear with me. Oh, interesting. So Teresa, let's see, Teresa. Oh, who is Momo? So I, I'm catching up with the comments. So Teresa, Momo, oh, there's Momo's already answered. So Momo says, I work with the Art Hives Network. I'm an experimental artist in development. You are absolutely an artist. All artists are in development. That never stops. That never stops. Um, and Momo uh, is one of the facilitators of a virtual Spanish speaking hive. Momo, if you'd like to share information with Teresa about your hive and well with everyone about your hive and when it happens and how you can join, please feel free. And you can use any kind of paper for weaving. I had some tissue paper on hand that I've been wanting to play with for a while now. And I've also got some pages from some old encyclopedias that I had hanging around waiting for a project. I'm going to use some of those pages. I have some papers that I've used in previous like live streams that I've painted. And I just enjoyed the colors. I enjoyed creating the colors and I think I might weave them into the process as well. And just start layering, just start layering all, all the things and see where it takes me. It's kind of a spontaneous thing. Just thinking, just remembering, I don't know if you, if anyone out there remembers making placemats. Um, I don't know if everyone made placemats in kindergarten, but that was one of the things I did. And just a simple crisscross weave. And Teresa, yes, we are all always learning. That is so, so true. And I wouldn't have it any other way, to tell you the truth. I can't imagine getting to a point in life where it's like, okay, I'm done. I can stop now. I don't want that. What I want is to always be curious. I always want to feel excited. I want to know that there's something interesting waiting. Oh, are you going to tear for me? Oh no, you're just going to have to cut. All right, fair enough, fair enough. I think that's one of the things I love about spaces like this. Because we, we create together, we inspire one another with what we're doing, the kind of questions we ask, what kind of conversations that we have. And every time, I even love, I think one of my favorite things is, you know, making mistakes. It would be very boring to know everything, Nicole, exactly. I mean, we all have our own knowledge. We have our own lived experience that we draw from every single day. So that's, that's another thing as well. What we, there are things each one of us knows that we might take for granted things that perhaps we just are so used to knowing or experiencing that we, what? We just don't think it's very interesting to anyone else. But I know for a fact that every single person here has so much they could teach, so much they could share. And will share, and they do share, you do share. And I think part of that is just simply because We're all curious. And Momo, let's see. So Momo says, I went to kinder, oh, interesting, kindergarten for about a week. It was in interfering with your cartoon schedule so you didn't go back. <laughs> Scooby-Doo one. <laughs> Maybe that's why I'm catching up with the arts now. You know, and you're not alone, Momo. I think there's a lot of, a lot of folks out there for one reason or another. Again, like it's taking it, making an assumption that because I've grown up a certain way or lived a certain way that other people have as well. But that's not the case at all. And depending where you're from and what kind of life you've had and the family or the supports, the caregivers you had around you, everything can be so different. And I like being reminded of that. I love, I love learning. I love being reminded and held accountable for when I'm making those assumptions. I'm going to try and tear this just freehand and see where it goes. See what kind of interesting shapes I get. Oh, all right, okay. 
I'm going to save all these little bits as well, even though they're not strips. Because I have a feeling that I'll be able to use them to layer up afterwards. And that's Nicole saying, happy accidents, not mistakes. A little Bob Ross into the afternoon. That was another beautiful thing to be reminded of uh, when I was talking with Asa yesterday. Just that, that interesting thing each one of us has. At the living room, we call it the inner critic. I'm not sure what other folks in other art hives might refer to it as, but it's that that part of you that is afraid, that judges yourself, the part of the part of us that perhaps, well, the loveliness, the lovely playfulness and enthusiasm we lost as, you know, coming out of childhood, that fearlessness to try things, to experiment with things, um, and then Somewhere along the way, we lose it. And I think we talked with Momo about this a little bit too, and Anna as well. And uh, that piece of ourselves that judges ourselves. Now, every week we end up talking about the inner critic here, one way or another. But I think it's like it's always a good thing to revisit because it sneaks up in different ways. And I think one of the ways, of course, is when we become so afraid, afraid of making mistakes that we end up not trying anything at all. And I know folks have their own experiences with that. It would be interesting actually to, to talk about when we first became aware of, you know, reclaiming. We talk about the inner critic a lot. So what happens if we flipped it and talked about when we first rediscovered our freedom, our creative freedom? And when that joy began to come back to us. If anyone would like to join in that conversation and share their experiences, please feel free. I think it's something to be celebrated because we know that we're always going to be, for one way or another, I think it's easy to be hard on ourselves. I think we're quite familiar with that piece, but I wonder how easy it is to be kind to ourselves. I wonder how easy it is to remind ourselves of how awesome we are and what it felt like. Yeah, just, just everything that went into reclaiming that part of ourselves. Oh, hello, Shelly. So nice to see you here. I'm sorry you're having a difficult day. Not just a difficult day, a very difficult day. I'm glad you're here with us. It's so good to know that you're here. And for folks who are watching, I let everyone know it's okay if you can't stay the whole time. There's a lot going on in each of our lives. So if you can only stay for a little bit and then you need to go do something else, that's okay. If you'd like to make art along with us, that's wonderful, but if there are other things you want to do while you listen to us, just have us on in the background as an extra friend. That's okay too. If you'd like to chat and join the conversation just like Shelley did there, you are more than welcome to. Because I know sometimes it takes a lot to come out and make yourself seen. And Shelley, we'll come back to you. I'm glad you're here. That says a lot. It says a lot about how you love yourself, that you'll make time for this. And to sit down and join us and reach out and connect for that support. Thank you for that. So Momo says, oh, the, so this was the moment of rediscovering, reclaiming your creativity. Momo says, that moment for me was at La Riche d'Art Saint-Henri, and I know I just butchered the French there. I wish I spoke more than one language. I do not, but I love that art hive. And when I go back to Montreal one day, I hope to visit again soon. Uh, so she says, I was at uh, Saint Henri, when I really started to just embrace what will come, not that the inner critic, yes, 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 not the inner critic, um, what the inner critic left, I still get visits from time to time. Yeah, the inner critic doesn't really leave us. And sometimes they, uh, they might have constructive things to say, right? They come, I think they always enter into the conversation with good intentions, but don't always have something important or necessary to say. Sometimes they're old leftover voices 
from our lives, from our experiences that aren't that helpful anymore. Oh, interesting. So, Wendy, you're having a difficult day too. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that as well. Well, I think maybe quite a few of us. Yeah, it's not been that an easy day for me either. I'm... Here's a question then as well, on top of the other question, and maybe the two questions would overlap. Folks, what would help make your day a little bit better? What do you think we need in our days to shift things and shake them up? I don't know if there's an answer to that, but I've, sometimes even thinking about it can help. And on that note, huge thank yous to everyone out there who is having a difficult day, who's decided to come out and join us anyways. I'm so, I'm really honored when anyone chooses to spend time with us here. It means a lot. And I hope that by the end of the time we share together that something will have shifted for you. And Nikki, oh, Nicole's making, <laughs> making a tiny mushroom. Uh, I love that, and you know I want to see a picture of that. Oh, Nick, oh, Nikki. Nikki Patel says, let's tell Mary what we love about the living room art studio. <laughs> I'll start. The friendliness and acceptance we feel when we went there. And, well, and then just, just me. Yeah, no, that's okay. I need to say thank you. I need to practice saying thank you. Thank you, Nikki. That's very lovely. And Laura... Huh. Oh, so this is going back to that lovely question about reclaiming creativity. Laura says, when I was on maternity leave at 37, I had not been making anything but crocheted bags for a few years. Having time to rediscover my creativity was amazing. Sewing, collage, and weird magnets. I love your weird magnets, Laura. They're amazing. Still my favorite things. Even though, once again, I have less time trying. Just trying. And that's all it all is, right? That's all... I think that's all that any of us can really do, is try, right? Trying is doing. I think, again, maybe it's part of that inner critic, but the, the confusion, the interestingness with uh, achieving and being productive and, and doing things in a certain way, the trying is doing, Laura, right? As long as we can remind ourselves that that's the case. Trying is doing. And I love that. The, you know, reclaiming it from the practical, you know. I think for me, sometimes I reach for creating very practical things when I need to feel a sense of comfort. Where's that ruler? There we go. So I'm just laying out some of the strips I have here of tissue paper. And I'm going to lay this across. I'm going to try this just to get my weaving started. How many pieces do I have there? Let's make that, let's make it that. I'm gonna lay my ruler across the center point. And this is what I remember from kindergarten, I think. I'm just gonna use it to flip every other piece of tissue paper over. Now stay there, come on. Just stay for now, stay for now little pieces of paper. Yes, stay for now. Come on, come on. What was I talking about, folks? What was I going on about? <laughs> and the weird magnets are amazing. Yeah. Momo, the weird magnets. Laura uh, is one of our collage artists in the community. Uh, and Laura, yeah, do you have any, if you have any pictures, I might even have one on hand here to show off. I know I've purchased quite a few from you over the years. Laura makes the most amazing vintage, like repurposed, upcycled treasures. It's lovely. And all of them, there's like a delicious kind of dark humor that runs through everything. Come on, stay paper. And let's see. And then Nikki saying, so Nikki answering the question, what would make the day better? Oh, lovely. This is a nice one. Sunshine, dogs, chocolate, funny videos. This is kind of turning into a funny video with the day I've been having. Um, but maybe not that kind of funny video. Those are all delightful things that can help shift, shift us out of one place into another. And again, music. 
If folks want to turn on some music, feel free. Music is a very powerful thing, right? And so that's the other thing as well. If folks need to, you know, you do you. If there are things that would maybe help you feel better than hanging out here and making art, I encourage you to go do those too. Sometimes having a walk outside for me, just getting back out into the air and sort of seeing, seeing things, really looking and just seeing things for the first time. Maybe looking at something that you've always seen or looked at before and, and suddenly seeing it with new eyes. Does that make sense? Let's see. And Nikki saying, oh, so this is, oh, thank you, Nick, Nicole Han answering that question that Nikki posed. You guys, you folks, the living room is a place where you find what you didn't know you were looking for. Oh, what a beautiful way of describing an art hive, period. I found it interesting seeing people's eyes light up when they found inspiration while looking on the shelves. You, you know it. Yeah, there's, that's one thing about the physical space that I'll miss very much, of course is just like the um, seeing how people respond to the abundance, the absolute abundance that is there. And when they give themselves the time to sort of get through that initial feeling that sometimes I think a lot of people feel when they first walk into an art hive of feeling a little overwhelmed by the whole idea of it. Um, we're so used to that kind of shop culture where the idea of taking something off the shelves to use without paying for it is such a strange idea. But once people become accustomed to that and come find their comfort with that, sort of sit through that feeling of being overwhelmed, it is a beautiful thing to watch their eyes light up and suddenly realize, what, anything? Everything? All of this? It can be used to make art? That's amazing. <laughs> and Nicole says, I still have the first thing I made at the studio. Oh my goodness. Yes, the clothespin fairy. I remember those. Oh my goodness. Okay. Maybe we'll do a clothespin fairy workshop. In my head, I'm lining up all the workshops I want to do in the next few months. Have to sort of get through with like repackaging and taking care of everything at the studio. And once that's through, I'd like to get back to some more kind of traditional workshop Skillshare things. And perhaps then we can return to and revisit, oh, wrong one, the clothespins fairy. I'd love that. Oh my goodness, yes. As I remember it on that day when you were making the clothespin fairies, it inspired a whole bunch of other clothespin fairies to be created. I think there was a group of, uh, young children following you around for the rest of your time at the studio. <laughs> and you did a, quite a number of spontaneous each one teach one moments that day. It's a beautiful thing, a beautiful thing. And Laura's saying, the living room was, is, thank you, it is. We're still here, folks, we're still here. Uh, it was an escape from the noise of everyday life. I can make something just because I want to. Oh, yeah. And Mary, Sam, Kevin, Anthony, all the wonderful folks that are still here. You know, the community, that was a really important piece for me to convey in the video I made about the studio. It's still here because we're still here. And I think, yeah, I'm going to miss the space enormously. But, um doesn't mean we won't always be without a space. And the people are still here, right? We are the community. We make, we make the art hive special. It's the people. And that can happen in a lot of different ways. And let's see. Oh, and Laura responding, yes. So everyone who was interested in the weird magnets that Laura was making, uh, you can go to Laura's uh, Facebook page by LB and have a look at all the wonderful creations Laura has made. Yeah. Oh yeah, and it's each one to each one. We did, oh wow. 
Early on in the living room, we used to make zines. We haven't made a zine collectively for a long time. I think I'd like to do that too. See, there's so many wonderful ideas. There's always a million ideas. Just finding the time and the, the space, kind of the emotional creative space to help make things happen. Because I don't know about you, but when I'm feeling super stressed or, you know, I need more than just time to make things. I need to give my brain a break. I need to give my brain a chance to bubble and percolate and stew. If my brain doesn't have that time, it just feels different. It feels different. Yeah. So maybe we'll get together and start creating a zine again. Get together virtually, perhaps. We'll start sharing it that way. Maybe I'll save that one to go over top. Well, no, let's see what happens. And yes, I am talking to myself and I am talking to my art. It's one of my favorite things to do. And for anyone who might be joining in the live stream now, welcome. This is just an opportunity, a time for people to get together, to create, to hang out. You can join in the conversation and the chat if you like. Share your comments or your questions or your thoughts. Or you can simply hang out with us and listen. Everybody's welcome. Everybody's welcome. And I know that not everyone can stay for the whole time, so don't worry, my feelings will not be upset if you have to go, if you have to do your grocery shopping, run an errand, go meet up with another friend, all of that is fine. You know it is. And for folks who watch this later on as well, once it's been archived, you're welcome as well. We feel your creative support. We feel your energy. We know you're there. So thanks for joining us as well. If you do watch once it's been archived and comment, I may not always see your comments right away though. So it does take some, me some time to catch up after the fact. All right. I haven't done a lovely little weaving like this in so long. All right. And so Nicole's saying, I was able to continue talking to my knitting group and now we meet virtually. See, there's a fantastic thing that's happening. Uh, I love it. And it's, it's unique, it's different. It's, you know, may not take, the, take place of meeting people in person and face to face like we used to being able to share space in the same way. But uh, I just love how everyone has found new ways of connecting and supporting one another during this time. I love it. And I think after, you know, when things return to a kind of normal, whatever that normal might look like, we will, like us, I can only speak for the living room, I think we'll maintain this. We'll continue to have these virtual opportunities, even when we have another way to meet with people. This is also, I feel we need, you know, we need to have many different ways of connecting. There's not just one way, like being an artist. There's not just one way to be an artist. There's not just one way to human or connect or create with one another. You can build relationships in so many different ways. All right, so this layer is almost complete, I think. When I have it all set, I think what I will do is just lightly glue the end so this doesn't unwind. And then I might move on to another weaving to use as a surface. All right, so is everything where I want it to be?
Okay. Let's see. What's this glue stick like? Okay, now this is going to be interesting. Maybe I shouldn't use this because the tissue paper is so light. I think a glue stick might just pull the whole thing up. So can I find some glue? Oh my goodness. If you folks could see my desk space right now. Well, it would remind you of the living room studio. It would remind you an awful lot about that space with the kind of clutter, the creative clutter I have going on here. Do, 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 do. If I was a bottle of glue, where would I be? Well, here. Okay, this is fabric glue, but I'm only gonna use a little bit. Is it not even open yet? Oh no, I don't wanna open it then. See, this is the inner dialogue. This is what I have in my head. But yes, Momo says, yes, this is an awesome way to connect. And when we don't live close, different cities, we live in different cities, countries, or even continents. Yes, it's so great in the winter. You're, you're like, that's something, that's a whole other conversation, isn't it? When it's not fun to go outside, Momo says, being able to connect virtually has provided us with a new way to be together when we don't necessarily want to go out in the world when it's cold or when it's super rainy. And especially for our community members who have perhaps mobility issues or different kind of health uh, conditions that might make it difficult for them to move out into the city and navigate, you know, sidewalks or snow banks or icy paths. This is a fantastic way for us all to connect. Yeah, and Nikki, you're right. Like this, Nikki's saying um, so many creative people all over the globe. And, <laughs> and Nicole's saying my dog would disagree about not wanting to go outside in the winter. <laughs> she loves the snow. Yes, yeah, that's, yeah, true, true, true. But as far as, oh, I don't know. You know what? I'm just glad this is here for everyone. I'm glad that we have these opportunities. Okay, glue, glue, where are you, glue? Come to me, glue. Everyone, if you have a glue song that you'd like to sing at home for me right now to conjure, help me conjure some glue, I'd be happy. Just put it out there into the universe. No, that's some, that's a bingo dabber. I don't need a bingo dabber. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to go for it. I'm going to try the fabric glue. Here it goes. And Nikki, it's amazing how many uh, creative people we've connected with. Even like the fact that there's people in this chat from Montreal, there's people in this chat from, uh, I know in other live streams we've had people visiting from, what is that? The UK, from the States. Let's see, what can I put this? Do, 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 do. A little dab of glue. You know what? Here, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna go back to my chopstick method. <laughs> That's my opening the glue bottle face. <laughs> hey Jennifer! Welcome to the hive! It's so it's so so good to see you. Welcome. Aw. Jen says it's good. Glad to see your face and hear your voice. Uh, it's lovely. And I'm imagining your face and your voice as I'm sitting here trying to open this glue bottle. <laughs> Who said you didn't need muscles to make art? Okay. <laughs> Something, the universe does not want me to uh, use this glue today. So I guess it's glue stick. It is, folks. I'm going to try and do this very delicately. I'm still going to use the chopstick method. Un unsung art supplies chopsticks, like the ends of old sort of used up paint brushes. They're such excellent tools to use in a pinch. Oh, interesting. And Nicole says, what color should I make the top of your mushroom? Well, what color is the bottom of your mushroom? And most importantly, have you asked the mushroom yet? What color it wants to be? There we go. Not a traditional glue stick uh, technique, but it will do in a pinch. If I had a liquid glue that would open for me right now, I'd be using that instead. And you can see the pigment coming off in the glue stick. 
from where I've used this for other my chopstick tool for other uh, activities <laughs> tape yeah if I had tape around <laughs> oh interesting so let's see I'm going to ask so I just received a message on another platform here uh, there's someone out there in the community who's looking for someone to do some drawings to do some drawings for them if anyone's interested in doing some drawings for another community member, I'm not sure for what. I think maybe for a storybook that they're working on. Let me know. Just some friendly community drawings for someone that's out there. Do, 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 do. Oh, interesting, interesting, interesting. I'm going to push that up. Do that there. Excellent. And uh, Nicole says, okay, so back to the mushroom. It's white, very true. Oh yeah, yeah, ask, ask the mushroom. Ask your art. I think sometimes we forget to ask the art what it wants. Maybe if I'd asked this what it wanted, it would have told me. Maybe I missed out. Weaving, what do you want? What do you want to be? There's actually a beautiful, well, if any of you have ever been in the studio, you've heard me go on about this before, the lovely witness, witness writing, witness art creation process by Pat B. Allen. Such a beautiful way of creating where you do end up having a dialogue with the artwork that you've created. Kind of an intuitive process where you just invite yourself into the process that you've created on a deeper level. Okay, here we go. So that's the first one. <laughs> Let's see where this goes. Is there anybody out there who talks to their art? Let me know if you talk to your art, folks. Inquiring minds want to know. I don't think I'm the only one. Oh, come on, come on. Just hang in there. Oh, Laura saw a pink cat mushroom yesterday. Was this on a walk? It's a beautiful time of year to be out there. Out there in the wilderness if you can be. Or not even the, wil the wilderness of your city if you can. I know here the salmon are hopping. They are hopping up that creek, up to the towards the watershed. Come, come. Stay there, stay there. Oh no, now my other fingers are getting sticky. The comedy of weaving. Now, this is the only issue when you're working with like such a light paper, like a tissue paper. If you're working with something a little stronger, like a construction paper or a newsprint or scrapbook paper, this won't be such an issue when you're doing paper weaving. And when, oh hey Jay, nice to see you. Welcome to the living room hive. And Wendy. Only when working with jewelry do I talk to it. Anything else? You don't, you don't, really. So that's fascinating, Wendy. Why do you think you talk to the jewelry you're creating? Is it because you're, because Wendy also creates, for those of you who may not know, Wendy uh, makes fabulous, fabulous jewelry, often out of upcycled or repurposed um, items that she finds. So I have a beautiful necklace that Wendy made. One Hummingbird Lane, I believe, is that your page? Let me know. Uh, you can put it in the link so other people can visit it and check it out as well. I have this beautiful necklace uh, that I bought from Wendy with a beautiful teaspoon and a key sitting inside the spoon. And I just love it. It's kind of like a comfort piece for me that I wear when I really, I should be wearing it now, uh, when I need to just feel a little kind of, I don't know, security, something about the key being held by the spoon. I just found so beautiful. 
And it also makes such a beautiful sound. The repurposed jewelry, I love that. So yeah, why do you talk to your jewelry but nothing else? That's, I'm fascinated by that. We all have those things that we do in certain circumstances but in no other otherwise. It's always interesting to know when those things happen, why they happen. <laughs> and then Momo, oh, revisiting Pat Bialen's process. Yes, by the way, she's a, <gasps> what? Pat Allen's a panelist today at Concordia event for the fourth space? Okay, folks, I'm a little bit of a fangirl when it comes to Pat B. Allen. You know, some people get really super impressed or, you know, all tongue-tied when they meet, I don't know, pop stars or movie stars or something. With me, it's Pat B. Allen. Um, it's really embarrassing, actually. She's pretty awesome. So she's a panelist at the event for the fourth space. I saw the beginning. We'll watch the entire chat on the weekend. We'll share it. Yes, yes, yes. We'll share it in case you're interested. Momo, I would love it if you could share that chat. That would be amazing. And <laughs> and uh, Nicole just giving the salmon a shout out. Run, salmon, run. Uh, and just on that conversation about talking to our art, Nicole talks to her artwork and yells at technology. I don't think you're the only one who does that either. I think you're not alone with that. Oh, let's see. Oh, so how do we, so then there's a conversation Laura's having about responding or replying to people perhaps. Thank you. And Wendy has shared One Hummingbird Lane is the name of Wendy's, Wendy's, I think the Facebook page and the shop on Etsy. I love, you know, what a good time to support local artists and makers. Such an important time because we are not going to be having the same kind, well, maybe we are in some ways. We won't be having the the exact same kind of marketplaces that we have been able to have in other years. I think a lot of stuff will be happening like this virtually. So if you're interested in supporting a local maker, check out what they're working on. Let them know that you like their stuff. I mean, that's a huge, huge piece, isn't it? That I, another one that I've been reflecting on lately, just about how we appreciate, how we appreciate one another and letting people know Let's see. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> it's good to know Momo saying not embarrassing. Oh, okay, so here, Wendy. I'll come back to Momo in a second. Wendy, interesting. So why does Wendy talk to her jewelry as she's making them? She thinks it's because the pieces have history. Yeah, I get that. I, yeah, I totally get that. Each piece has a life before it finds you. So it has a story to tell. So you're engaging with it. As you're engaging with it, you're learning about what kind of story it wants to tell, I suppose. That's how I feel about other kinds of art I make in a way. When I talk to my art, I'm getting to know it. Whatever it is, whatever it might be. Sometimes when I talk to myself, I feel that way as well. Like I'm getting to know myself in a certain situation or a certain headspace. And I think I have to, for whatever reason, it's not the same as journaling or even just consciously thinking about it with intention. There's something interesting that happens when I talk out loud to myself, whether it's to myself through my art, through what I'm making, or talking to myself just to figure something out or to help me out. There's been a number of times where I've just, yeah, just talked myself through difficult times just by, you know, yeah, talking out loud. Who cares what it looks like, right? Who cares? Whatever works. And Momo says, it's not embarrassing. So it's not embarrassing that I'm a fangirl for Pat B. Allen. Uh, totally get it. Yeah, and Pat B. Allen rocks. Anyone who isn't familiar with Pat's work, I totally encourage you to check it out. And even with the closing of the living room space, the studio space, I've been revisiting uh, the article that Pat Allen wrote about the closing of one of her, uh, her first hives and receiving a lot of comfort from that in the sense that like there's a real it's a good reminder that what we do in community creation and community work is an art form as well so those of you who've heard me refer to the living room as a work of art it absolutely is it's a living breathing uh functional 
art piece. And because it responds to community, it will change, right? It will change. And I want to check in with some other folks out there who are maybe struggling a little bit off the top. I know that Shelly was saying that she's been feeling, having a difficult day. If anyone else out there is having a difficult day, know that you're not alone, okay? It's okay. It's okay to ask for help. It's even okay to talk about it here if you feel comfortable doing so. There's lots of people here who can relate, perhaps, who might be able to help you through in some small way. These are difficult and strange times on top of just the general life stuff, which can be difficult and strange. So it's okay. It's also okay to celebrate. It's okay to laugh. It's okay to cry. The good thing about this kind of live stream is I can't see you. Nobody can see it. No one can hear you. If you want to have a really good cry while I babble in the background here, feel free. Creative humaning is absolutely allowed. And of course, if you want to make art about what you're going through, that's okay as well. It's never a bad thing to let the art hold the hard stuff. I almost put this in my coffee. Okay, no, 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 no. So let's see. And Laura, have a wonderful day. Know you're going to pick up M. Take care out there. And Nicole, oh, interesting. So we're on to fandoms now in the conversations at the side here. I'm just going to lightly pick up my tissue paper weaving here. Hopefully I haven't glued it to the page. So that's what that looks like right now. And now I'm going to switch things up and I'm going to go over and revisit some of the other pages I've been working on to create a layered effect. So I'll just set that aside for now. Cap my glue stick. And Laura, Nicole's saying, I found out one of my favorite actors is a fan of your work. He uses one of your vectors for his autographs. What? That's amazing, Nicole. Nicole, wow. I'm just so I'm thrilled and impressed always by the creativity I have that I meet and I see and I hear about in our community and how it connects people. You never know who your art is going to connect you with, do you? It's amazing. Okay, so early on, um, earlier today, because I wanted it to dry out a little bit, I tore some pages out of an encyclopedia that I had. It was a very old encyclopedia, so not very current, but I, I love working with repurposed like or older papers, things that would otherwise be thrown out or just recycled. And you can do this with pages from old encyclopedias, but you can also use pages from newspapers as well and get the same kind of effect. And I just used a light watercolor over the top to give it some color. And let's say Peter, oh, hey, Peter. So Peter's visiting. Mary, uh, Mary, I'm here for a couple of minutes. Just wanted to see how you were doing after hearing your news last night about shutting down the studio place. Yeah. You are not alone. Some places in Montreal are also closing because of the same thing. Thank you so much, Peter. That means a lot. And Peter says, I'm sad to hear that you guys are shutting down. Although I know I'm not from Ontario. That's okay. We can, you know, we're all in this together. Like you were saying, it's difficult times for everyone. And, um, I'd like to think of it like we're evolving. It's not so much that the living room project is shutting down. We're just letting go. We've made a decision to let go of the studio space that we've been renting because we don't imagine that we'll be able to connect and gather there in person anytime soon. So when something like that happens, what we're faced with is, hmm, yeah, it's, what is it about? Um, I, I see it as an opportunity to take action, to make a choice, to get creative and Again, if the studio is a living work of art that is constantly evolving, being influenced by the community and influencing the community, then perhaps this is just the piece, the work in progress becoming something new. It's one of the things I love about the Art Hive movement that we're not some giant corporation that is too big to fail. You know, we're not, um, 
We're not even a middle-sized arts organization that a lot of people rely on for various things. Um, we can still do what we do and change and grow and make new decisions. We can try new things and it doesn't, it doesn't take a, like, we don't have to cut through a lot of red tape. We don't have to go through three level, levels of board and senior blah, blah, blah. We can say, okay, this isn't working right now. What can we do? Well, we can try something different. And so that's how I'm looking at this part of the process. And it involves letting go of the studio, which is a very interesting thing. But it's not the end, folks. Definitely not the end. Just a new chapter. I really, truly believe that. Okay, what do we have here? I know I want to layer this weaving over this page. I just have to get a sense of what shapes I want it to take. And Jen, oh yes, yay! I'm glad I'm not the only person who talks out loud to myself. That's amazing. I know, and Jen saying I'm sad yet happy to see you. Um, I'm sad yet happy to hear you too and to know you folks are out there. Let's see. And we are still here. We're all still here. Oh, and Nikki digging in. You know what? I didn't ask Nicole. Who is the person? Who is this? Uh, who's the actor who uses your art as a part of their signature now? That's super exciting. Nicole says his name is Damien Clark. I knew him for his live acting, but apparently he did the voice of Cell from DBZ. Dragon Ball Z? Z? Is, is, am, am I getting that right? Maybe? I know Nicole also has had her work appreciated by all sorts of other people. Nicole, didn't you crochet all the Schitt's Creek characters and send little crocheted dolls to them? I have, I have a strong memory of seeing them posting about that and how much they loved the crocheted versions of themselves that you made for them. Oh, wow. Whoa, Peter, that's some news. So Peter just um, letting me know that one of the art hives in Montreal is uh, is shutting down because they cannot pay rent. And I think that's an interesting thing. I'll check in around that. I'll reach out. And it's not, a, sometimes it's a, a decision about what to do with the money that you have as well during these times. So we evolve, don't we? We evolve, but thank you for letting me know. I'm going, going to investigate that. And Jay saying, my daughter's favorite actress commented or liked rather, your comment on her Instagram about your daughter's haircut. And then she took pictures of this actress with her uh, for the stylist to use as a reference. My daughter danced around for hours. She was so excited. That's amazing to hear. That's amazing. I wonder who that actress was. That would be, I do love when artists respond. And you know what? It doesn't matter how famous someone is or how big they are. Uh, sometimes it might take longer to get a response from them or you might have to get through more people, but we're all, we're all really the same at the end of the day. I'm gonna fold some stuff in here. I'm gonna crumple some things in and see what's going on. Oh, okay, so Momo's responding a little bit to Peter, sort of updating uh, on that. Let's see, and if I, I think I might've frozen a little bit here as well. So bear with me, folks. So Momo with an update about St. Henri. Well, it's more the building has been bought and they will not be able to keep the tenants. There's like so many different things that are happening. We don't have control over everything. Again, so we make do with what we have. I'm going to do something interesting here. Well, not interesting. I'm just going to try something. I'm just going to try something. Come with me, come with me, come with me. Let's take, I'm going to try and shape this out a little bit. It's my favorite of favorite symbols. When I'm feeling stressed, when I'm feeling like I need a little something, I always go back to the heart shape. I know, I know. It's my thing. <laughs> now I'm having trouble seeing this video again. Is anyone else having trouble seeing the video all of a sudden? Let me know if that's the case. Technology today is playing with me. Um, yes, just about the, 
the other artists that we look up to and reaching out. I think it's a lovely thing to remember that they're just like us and they love hearing about how we how we appreciate their work. And I I think never lose an opportunity to reach out to someone that you love. Ruby Rose, oh fantastic. <laughs> yeah. And you're right, like we'll see what happens. This is a new beginning for us. I am just revisiting the conversation about what's happening with the living room and at St. Henri. There's a lot of difficult things that are going on for everybody. All right, so I'm still here. That's good. Thanks, Momo. See, I'm going to try something. Let's see what we do. Let's see what happens if I just kind of deconstruct the weaving that I've made a little bit. I always tidy it up after a little. Maybe the ruler will come in handy here, actually. So I've laid some glue down that I'm going to use as a guide. had a metal ruler that is somewhere that I haven't been able to find today. Ah, Carlos, here for the crumpling, welcome. So good to see you, Carlos. I'm glad that you're here. Let's see, actually I'm gonna leave some of that. Because I think what I'd like to do is play around with some uh, glue, some Mod Podge, and sort of soak into the layer of the tissue paper to let the newsprint come up. So we get, we begin to see the layers the layers emerge. Now, if you wanted to as well, you could always, this would be an interesting thing to try when you're doing sort of blackout or cutout poetry. If you'd blacked out certain words on the page with marker, and then you'd have a whole other pattern emerge through the tissue paper too. I hope that makes sense. For folks who are joining us, thank you. Oh my goodness, it's 20 after, oh, it's almost 20 after three. This time flies by so quickly for me. What a day it has been. Lots of funky tech issues going on. I can't even see the comment thread in the way I normally do. Anthony's visited and helped us through one of the tech pieces. Momo's been guiding me through the others. I love it. We're all here for one another in our own unique ways. And Peter saying, anyway, oh, Peter needs to go, but I'm glad to see you're doing okay after the big news. I will hopefully see you on Friday at the coffee chat if you are there. I'm going to try. I also have to, of course, what this news means is that I will also be packing up the studio until the end of October, which is its own interesting thing. And, and for folks who are worried about me, I'm okay. It's big news. It's always, it's never not going to be big news when changes like this happen in our lives. And whenever I think about all the fabulous journeys we've had with one another in that space, all the wonderful things we've created with one another, of course it's sad. So I think I'll be up and down for a while, if that makes any sense. I think some days when you see me here, I'm going to be really silly and giddy other days, I might be a little more down. That's okay. I think making room for what we feel and letting ourselves feel it will be a really important part of this process. It'll be important for me, but I think it's gonna be really, really important for anyone who's loved and appreciated that studio space. 
anyone who's been a part of it. Ah, the coffee chat. Oh, bye, Nicole. Nice seeing you. Have a wonderful and safe day yourself. And mom was asking what the coffee chat is. So instead of doing Zoom, uh, what we've tried to do in the community, what we're starting to do more of is use Facebook rooms. So I don't know if anyone who has a group or a page, you may have noticed over the last couple of months, a little, a new little icon pop up underneath where you're working. Um, and so it says, uh, I think it says room. I think that's all it says really. And if you click on room, what it does is it allows you to create a zoom like space, but on Facebook. So you can go live chatting in groups of friends on your Facebook page or what we've done because we're an organization and it works a little bit differently. Uh, we created a group page where we have these Facebook rooms. So to show up in a Facebook room, you simply have to join the group and then at a certain time when the link is shared, you click on the link and you can see one another and you can make art together or chat. So we're getting people used to this uh, new way of engaging with one another. I think everybody knows what Zoom is, but not many folks have tried Rooms yet. And it works in a very similar way. Uh, we're excited because it's all in one place. So we don't have to ask people to go to a whole other platform if they're not quite used to that or wanting to share personal information like emails with us for login codes and things like that. So we're experimenting with rooms. So you can join this Friday. Two of our fantastic, well, they're not placement students anymore, actually. Um, they're just Nikki and Michelle, social service workers uh, who also love community and love creativity. They have uh, they started this group back in the spring for folks just to kind of connect and just say hi to one another over a morning coffee. So every other Friday at 9 a.m., you can join them for a one hour coffee chat and just connect with other community members, see how one another is doing. I'm looking forward to using it for workshops as well. So we have a coffee chat group folks can join. We also have a workshop space group that people can join where will we be, we'll be posting uh, more links for sort of specific skill sharing workshops that we'll do in the future. Yeah. Mm. Coffee. So a lot of this is of course evolving and growing and changing. Uh, and we'll figure it out as we go. Ah, let's see. Now, again, I can't find glue. So what I'm going to do is just see what happens if I wet this paper down and kind of glue it to itself using the paper fibers themselves. And see what adheres. Yeah, so Momo, you're welcome to join the coffee chat if you like, and I'm going to try and join as well. Um, at least for a little bit until I have to run to the studio and get packing. It's amazing. Uh, it's kind of like doing an inventory now, looking at all the materials we had and I'm discovering materials that I didn't even know we had. Oh, hello, Nona and Liam. How are you doing? Oh, Jay's at school pickup. So good to see you guys, or hear you, or see you, see you in chat form anyways. How you doing? And Momo is saying, great idea. Yeah, a great idea to experiment with other platforms. I've tried all of them, and Momo's favorite is Zoom so far, but I might give another try to Rooms. Yeah, there were some, in the beginning especially, Rooms was really, it'd be interesting to talk to you to see what your experience of Rooms is like. Sometimes, especially in, when they first launched it, it was a little bit, a little bit glitchy and some folks had trouble accessing it, but some folks have trouble accessing Zoom as well. So it's just one of those things, figuring out what works, trying different things. I'm just gonna fold in the edges of this as I'm going, as I'm manipulating it here to see what happens. And I like the idea again of the the rooms because if people, I feel like if there's a certain kind of security that comes from working, I heard that there's some Zoom, some virtual hives out there on Zoom that have been kind of, what is it, what did Rachel call it? Zoom bombed, where someone just sort of shows up. I'm gonna tear that a little bit. I love working with wet paper. It becomes really sculptural. Let's 
Let's let that stay like that. Ah, okay. I'm not online anymore. All right. <laughs> Am I not online anymore? Oh no. Hey, let's see. If I'm not online, well here, I'll type that after. If I'm not online, folks, thank you so much for joining us. We were coming near to the end of our session today. Anyways, I'm so thankful for everyone and anyone who joined. If I'm still here and you can still see me, that's fantastic. You know I'll be back next week, same time, same place to create and hopefully less technical glitches happening. Ah, I'm back. <laughs> So today there's something going on. If I believed in Mercury in retrograde, maybe it would be that, but I don't know. But it is, we are, as I was just saying, you know, we are coming to the end of our time. Anyways, so thank you so much folks for joining. Let me do a little close up of this so you can get a sense of what I'm working towards. Now, because I can't see what's happening, I hope that you can. Let's see. And I hope you're getting a sense of the effects that's emerging. It's nice if you have a little bit of white glue on hand to work with, then you can kind of coat this or Mod Podge it a little bit and begin working in other kinds of fibers too. So when this is dry, I think what I might do is start stitching on it as well. Just piercing the paper and then pulling through needle and thread, embroidery thread to give it some extra texture. Maybe even using the needle and th thread to write. Hi, Carmen. How? So, thanks. Thanks for letting me know we're back. That's amazing. That's so great. Meeting, oh, like, like meeting new people. It's been a day, folks. It has been a day, but the day has been made so much better by taking this time to connect and create with you here. Thank you for joining us. I promise it's not always this glitchy or wacky. Well, I bring, I'm usually, I'm usually the one to bring the wacky. The computer just does its thing. Um, but thank you for your patience. Thank you for your time. Thank you to those folks who were joining us, even though they felt like they were having a difficult day. I hope your days are feeling a lot better. I hope that you're able to walk away from this time together, feeling a little uplifted, a little relaxed, and maybe even inspired. Okay. Remember that you can always let the art hold the hard stuff. And you can talk yourself through what you need to talk yourself through. And when that doesn't work, reach out, connect with someone, anyone to help you through those difficult times. And I'm glad that today during this time, you reached out to us and spent some time with us here doing, well, whatever it is you're doing. And if you have been creating work this week or today that you would like to share with us, we're gonna post a little show and tell uh, after this is done, so you can share pictures of work that you've been doing, links to tumblers or blogs, places where you've been writing, if that's your thing. You can even share clips to music you've been working on. We love to learn about what you're creating and how you're creating it, because this is it. This is part of the living room experience. This is the art hive, a place for us to connect and create mm -hmm. and just celebrate and honor one another's journeys together. And this creative humaning we're all doing in very strange times. So in the meantime, thanks so much for being here again. And until we can connect and create with one another again in person, I really look forward to connecting and creating with you right here online. I'll see you back here on Facebook next Wednesday for another pop-up living room live stream art studio. Yeah, that's a long title, huh? Ah, it is what it is. Thanks folks. We'll see you again soon. Take care of yourselves.